a rocket every day. Sounds crazy, but perhaps when you hear something that can be made in a day, you'd think of a television, a motorbike, or even a car, but no one had ever thought that it'd be possible when it comes to rocket production. However, the leaders of SpaceX have deemed it possible. That is one of the main goals they had set for the Starship project, which will help humans get to the moon, Mars, and beyond. And you need not look any further than Starbase in Boca Chica Beach, Texas, the central operation where SpaceX is creating Starship prototypes at. The facilities here are considered at the cutting edge of engineering technology, but when measured against the goal of producing a Starship every day, it's still not enough. Changes and upgrades still need to be made, and since the beginning of last year, there have been notable modifications and updates that took place. A new structure, SpaceX's Star Factory, has been built to replace the old production tent and bay structure. But how will Star Factory change the Starship production process? And why is it more important for SpaceX than you'd think? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. To date, perhaps there are still many people who feel that Elon Musk's Mars dream is unrealistic. However, Musk never gives up and always shows confidence every time he mentions his dream. That is the great vision of the richest billionaire as well as the owner of the largest rocket and spacecraft manufacturing company in the world. Not only Elon Musk, but his assistant current SpaceX president, when Shotwell always had very bold and confident thoughts about the Mars project. Earlier this year, at the FAA's annual Commercial Space Transportation Conference in Washington, D.C. on the 8th of February, she said, Why can't we build a rocket every day? That's what we're focusing on with Starship, attacking every part of the production process to be able to build lots of these machines. But can they actually do it? We'll get back to this question later. But another question that's more apparent now is, is why SpaceX wants to do that. And perhaps we'll have the answer when we look closely at the Mars project. Earth's nearest neighbor, Mars, at the closest distance, is also 33.9 million miles or 54.6 million kilometers away from us. To complete this long journey, it may take us up to seven months or more, but it'll be more difficult for a starship to fully carry out the entire mission. Thus, it would need other ships to hold fuel and cargo for the long journey ahead. Head, hypothetically. After arriving on Mars, the problem will become even more complicated. We would need enough food for the astronauts, enough equipment and tools to improve land and terrain conditions, then build the first dwellings, or houses, whichever you like. Also, we'd need to build a launch and landing system for the next flights. So, what exactly do we need to prepare? If you said that we'd need hundreds, even thousands of starships to handle that huge amount of work, well, good job. You should play more guessing games in the future. In any case, we'd need many types of starships as well to serve a certain task. For example, the crew starship to carry crew, the cargo starship to carry goods, materials, and equipment, and a fuel tanker starship to ca well, you know, it's, it's all in the name. With its large number and specific functions, they'll optimize and simplify the stages in missions. That's why SpaceX wants to create a rocket every day, as per Shotwell's statement. However, SpaceX's current infrastructure cannot meet such big ideals. During the development of Starship, the notable facilities serving their production were at the production tents. They have been built since the early days of Starbase, becoming a symbol of the Starship production system. These arch-shaped structures play an important role in creating the Starship and Super Heavy prototypes we know today. However, it's difficult for them to meet current and future workloads. In terms of size, the tents with 114 by 35 meters are quite cramped to accommodate many steel rings. Regarding height, in many pictures, we can see that one starship's nose cone is almost as tall as the doors of the production tent. This is very inconvenient, as large parts cannot be placed inside the tents, and many steps will have to be carried out outside the tent to have more spacious, uh, space. This will cause work to be greatly affected by the weather. Regarding the production system, each tent will have its own function. For example, SpaceX uses a tent for works related to the engines, another tent to produce the steel rings and domes, and the remaining tent to work with nose cones. Such a specific division can help make work clearer, but the work process cannot take place continuously and requires moving between tents many times. Such movements may affect other work in and around the tent. But besides the production tent, other structures serving assembly 
assembly like the mid-bay and low-bay are also becoming small, unable to contain the huge Starship prototypes. After SpaceX built larger structures like the High Bay, Mega Bay, and now the Mega Bay 2, Electric Boogaloo, which can hold about two or three complete Starship or Super Heavy prototypes inside, small structures like the mid-bay and low-bay have become obsolete. Faced with SpaceX's ambitious goal of a rocket every day, the uh, aforementioned structures need to be eliminated to make way for larger and more modern structures and systems. Enter Star Factory. Earlier last year, SpaceX started to build Phase 1 of the Star Factory next to the Production 10-3. This year, the next phases have also begun. About two months ago, the first structure, the Low Bay, was demolished, followed by Production 10-3, Mid Bay, and the most recent recent production tent 2. Star Factory has begun expanding construction on the location of these structures. After removing the old structures, the area was cleaned up, followed by the process of pouring concrete, building the frame structures, and finally finishing with the roof and walls. Currently, Star Factory still does not have a complete shape as planned. The reason is because the production tent 1 still exists. However, this last tent may be removed soon to create a complete structural space for Star Factory. Once completed, the Star Factory will be a large square structure with an estimated area of about 60,000 square meters or more. That's four to five times larger than the space of the three previous tents. It's also large enough to carry out high workload production activities. Thereby, SpaceX will not need to worry about space to store Starship parts. In addition to expanding the area, the box-shaped structure will help Star Factory optimize the internal area compared to the previous arch-shaped structure, which only reached the maximum height in the middle, because, you know, that's how tents work. The next difference of the Star Factory is that it'll be a unified structure instead of previous separate tents. Thanks to that, all work will take place in the same factory, so the stages will take place continuously without the need to move outdoors like before. Additionally, the design of the factory will also help the work inside not be affected by weather like the open structure of the production tents. Another extremely important factor, which is production technology, will also be upgraded. Star Factory factory is built based on Tesla's Gigafactory model. This factory is famous for its automated production lines that help create millions of electric cars each year. SpaceX will definitely want to apply it to Star Factory. If new technologies are applied, production work will become automated. Productivity will increase at a faster rate than previous manual methods, meeting the needs of mass production in the future. If these upgrades come to reality, the future Starbase will be extremely different from what we see today. And it wouldn't be surprising if we see many other 122 meter tall, 9 meter wide monsters standing everywhere at Starbase of the future, much like inside the base structure, rocket garden, launch pads, or even at the OLM. There needs to be more changes in order to reach Shotwell's stated goal. Starbase will probably need to continue to expand, other structures will need to be built, and SpaceX will need more of Star factory. But that certainly won't stop the talented leaders and engineers at SpaceX. After completing the first star factory, they can completely create a second, third, or even more. So if anyone were to come up to me and ask, would a starship every day be possible? I would answer, why not? With a huge production system behind them, perhaps the problem they need to worry about now is approval from government agencies. Once the green light turns on, once given the green light, that will be the time when the starship fleet, with thousands, even millions of citizens, led by Captain Elon Musk will fly to the new world of Mars. Well, that's about all for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you enjoyed learning more about the interesting story of Star Factory and how it's going to be in the future. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.